As you may know, Vulkan uses React, and you can't really talk about React without mentioning components. Now, Vulkan uses components in the same way that any React app would, but it also has a few specificities, a few extra features. So let's get started by just inspecting uh, the DOM and then switching to the React DevTools tab to inspect the React component tree. So you can see here we have a component named logo uh, inside a component named header and so on. So uh, the first thing we'll talk about is how to replace components because uh, in a traditional React app, uh, the logo component is included in header, which is included in layout, which is included in app. And if I wanted to change the logo component, I would have to basically change everything that comes before it, the whole uh, component hierarchy all the way up to the app component. Um, now, in Vulkan, you have a special feature that lets you swap out a single specific component. So I'm, uh, I'm using the um, example farm uh, example, and I'm just going to enable the example customization package, which has an example of uh, overriding a component. So if I go here, components, custom logo, we'll see a custom logo component that's pretty similar to the logo, except it has these uh, stars um, emojis next to the site title. And so the question is, how do we replace the component? Well, the answer is we're using the replace component utility imported from Vulkan Core. Now, if I go back, it's done reloading, you can see that this has been replaced. Uh, I'll inspect again. Let's go to logo directly. You can see it's now named custom logo. So our custom component is being taken into account and used to override the original logo component. Now, this is possible because if we look at header, so header is the one that includes the logo, you'll see it doesn't include a logo directly, but components.logo. So if you think about it, if we were to write something like import logo from logo.jsx, this is how you usually import React components, and it would work just fine. But um, the value of logo would be basically computed as soon as you write this line, which means that you wouldn't be able to change logo anywhere else uh, further down the line in the code base. Now, on the other hand, because we are calling components.logo, um, we are able to wait until this line of code is called, in other words, until the component is mounted, to figure out what components.logo really means. Now, you also don't want to forget to register the initial component. And you do this through the register component function. Now, in Vulkan, you often need to access special props that, um, you know, that might require data loading or loading from the Apollo or Redux store. And rather than write the same logic every time, which can get pretty complex, uh, there's a special way that you can pass props to your component. So here, for example, my component needs the current user. And to pass that prop to header, I can use the with current user, higher order component, or HOC for short. And typically, you know, in a non-Vulkan app, you would write something like export default with current user header, and the resulting export uh, would have the current user prop. Now, in Vulkan, we don't really want to export that component. We want to register it with the app. So that's why we don't use export default, but instead register component. But it does the same thing because uh, the first argument is the name of the component, the second is the component, but then any subsequent arguments will be used as HOCs and wrapped around the component itself. So, you know, I could write with current user, uh, with document, you know, with mutation. Uh, there's a bunch of pre made HOCs you can import from 
Vulkan Core, and that will definitely save you time to uh, add common features to your component as props. Now, so far, we've only been looking at functional components. But of course, React also has class components, such as the new letter uh, component, which has a constructor, a lifecycle method, some other methods, um, and, and then render. And um, a really cool thing you can do is you can extend this component so that when you replace it with a, a custom version, uh, you can pick and choose which of these you keep and which of these you will overwrite. So here's an example. In this case, we are changing the render method, but because we are extending the component, every other method will be kept intact. So we can still use subscribe email, we still have component will receive props and so on. Uh, one small detail to note is that I'm not extending a component.newsletter, but instead I'm extending get row component of newsletter. The reason for that is uh, we want to make sure we extend the, uh, the original component before it's wrapped with any of the uh, HOCs that we have here, with, with mutation, with current user, and with messages. Because once a component is wrapped, um, you know, it, it won't have all these methods. You can think of it as um, wrapping a box in wrapping paper. Once it's wrapped, you can't really see uh, what the box looked like. So for that reason, we do two things. We first extend uh, the raw version of newsletter, and then we use replace component, which will preserve all HOCs. So even though here I'm not writing with mutation, with this, with that, and so on, because I'm replacing the newsletter component, Vulkan will automatically reapply all these HOCs. So there you go. That's the, the component API in a nutshell. Um, of course, there's a documentation which contains uh, basically this, the same information in more detail. So I encourage you to take a look and let me know if you have any questions about Vulkan components.